Somebody shout, I am walking in the grace of financial dominion. Say that louder. I am walking in the grace of financial dominion. So throughout this month, we'll be talking about money. And now we have to do that because money is very important in everything. Anybody who portrays an attitude that says money is not important, he is lying. That person is not being truthful. Money is very important. That's why we have to talk about it in the church. Somebody shout hallelujah. And please, we have books for the month. I forgot to mention this in the first service. Books for the month in line with this subject are as follows. All the books were authored by me and you find them at the information desk. Number one is working in financial dominion. There is a book entitled Working in Financial Dominion. Please, if you don't have it in your home library, you need to get hold of that book and read it. So many of the things we'll be teaching will be coming from that book. Working in Financial Dominion. The second book is Understanding Kingdom Giving. Understanding Kingdom Giving, you also find it on the, uh, at the information desk. Understanding Kingdom Giving. It's very important because giving is a gateway to increase. Yes. Give and it shall be given. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. So there is abundance in giving. Thirdly, there is another book entitled Giving Methods in the House of the Lord. Giving Methods in the House of God. In the House of the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I'm speaking in this service on what I've captioned Working in the Grace of Financial Dominion. Part 2. Working in the grace of financial dominion. And dominion simply means to be in control. It means to be in charge. And dominion is God's original and primary purpose for the creation of man, isn't it? Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 26 going down to 28. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion. So we see there that right from creation, God's purpose for man was dominion. And by man there, I mean male and female, according to verse number 27. Because when he made man in his own image, the Bible says in the image of God, he created him. Now, this man was male and female. Male and female. Glory be to God. And in verse number 28, he repeats the agenda of dominion. The Bible says that God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it and then have dominion. Have dominion. There are many dimensions and facets of dominion that we can talk about. You have spiritual dominion. You have political dominion. And then financial dominion. That is what we want to talk about. Financial dominion. There are many scriptural examples of people who operated in financial dominion. Let's examine some of them because in Romans 15 and verse number 4, 
the Bible says that the things that were written before were written for our learning that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. The things that were captured in the canon of scripture were captured for our education. That if God did it for them, then he can do it for anybody else. Because we know that he is an impartial God. Acts chapter 10 verses 34 to 35. He is an impartial God. Acts chapter 10 verses 34 to 35. In truth I perceive that God shows no partiality. So if he blessed these people and endowed them with financial dominion, then he can do it for every other Jim and Jack who cares to align. Somebody shout hallelujah. So let us look at scriptural examples of people who operated in financial dominion. Number one, Abraham. Abraham. Abraham was so financially comfortable that he refused to receive gifts from kings. So financially comfortable. In Genesis chapter 13 and verse number 2. Genesis chapter 13 and verse number 2. The Bible says that this man was very rich. Yes. Very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. You must be rich in something, my friend. Decide that you're going to be rich in some dimension of life. Rich in livestock. In the case of Abraham. Rich in livestock. Mm. Rich in silver and gold. Silver and gold. And by the way, after he died, this man went to heaven. You remember? After... As rich as he was, after he died, he was received by God. That means God is not against us being rich. Come on, help yourself. I don't know if I have time to talk more about that later. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 14, reading, let's say, verse 20, to 24 and blessed be God most high who has delivered your enemies into your hand and he gave him a tithe of all verse 21 now the king of Sodom hear this said to Abraham give me the persons and take the goods for yourself look at verse 22 but Abraham said to the king of Sodom I have raised my hand to the Lord, God most high, the possessor of heaven and earth, verse 23, that I will take nothing from a thread to a sandal strap and that I will not take anything that is yours, lest you should say, I have made Abraham rich. I'm already rich. Now, you, according to the redemptive agenda of Christ, are a seed of Abraham. A believer is a seed of who? A seed of Abraham. Therefore, you must not allow poverty to sink you. If Abraham was a prosperity giant and like begets like and you are the seed of Abraham, then it is an insult on yourself for you to remain small in this life. I Therefore decree this hour. Every yoke of hardship anywhere in your life is cancelled. I said it is cancelled. I said it is cancelled. If I'm talking to believers, can I hear their living shout of amen? I said their living shout of amen. You may be sitting. Abraham. Number two, Isaac. Isaac was the son of Abraham. Just like you are the seed of Abraham. Isaac was filthy rich. In Genesis 26, verses 12 to 14. Genesis 26, verses 12 to 14. Then Isaac saw in that land 
and reaped in the same year a hundredfold and the Lord blessed him. May God bless you in the name of Jesus. Then the man began to prosper, my God, and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. Can I say this to you? That this month, there's going to be a separation between you and poverty in the name of Jesus. I said between you and poverty in the name of Jesus. I release upon you right now financial turnarounds. Financial turnarounds. Financial turnarounds. Financial increase. Financial abundance. Financial promotion. Financial prosperity. In the mighty name of Jesus. You believe it, shout, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it. I receive it. Mm, you may be seated. The man began to prosper. So forget about what has been happening before now. There's always a starting point. Isaac was not born like this. He began to prosper. He began. He began. After a season of being an identity, he began. He began to prosper. He began. This month, you are being launched into your prosperity in the name of Jesus. You are being launched into your financial dominion in the name of Jesus. Whatever you do beginning this hour shall prosper. I said it 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 shall prosper. Said it shall prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus. So, this church is going very far. And therefore, we cannot afford to be poor. Because we are supposed to partner with God in financing what is happening in this church. Therefore, you must vow that even for the sake of the church, you are not going to be small. No. Financial smallness has come to an end in your life in the mighty name of Jesus I'm talking to you can I hear a louder shout of amen there? you may be seated the man began to prosper and continued prospering what God is beginning in your life this month in financial prosperity increase and abundance shall continue it will not just be for this month. It shall not just be for this year. It shall what? Continue. It shall continue. It shall continue. So, financial comfort shall be endless in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because this month, I'm not only teaching, I'm also releasing prophetic arrows that will gun down any kind of financial hardship Financial non emptiness, financial littleness of any kind, anywhere in your life, will be vanished forever, vanquished forever, vanished, vanquished, and extinguished. Those of you that were surviving on borrowing, you shall become lenders. I said, You shall become lenders. I said, You shall become lenders. Somebody is becoming a lender. Borrowers are becoming lenders. Borrowers are becoming debt free. Debt free. Debt free. Debt free. I decree the supernatural repayment of all your financial debts in the mighty name of Jesus. Those of you that are being owed, you supplied goods and services but they are not paying you. I decree this hour. All those that are owing you shall be under pressure this month to release what belongs to you in the mighty name of Jesus. I said in the name of Jesus. Yeah. We have entered the season of financial dominion. The season of what? Financial dominion. Financial dominion. Our projects will be experiencing supernatural speed in the name of Jesus. You may be seated. Isaac, look at verse 14. The Bible says that he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. 
So the Philistines envied him. Mm. Look at verse 16. The Bible says, And Abimelech said to Isaac, Go away from us, for you are much mightier than all of us put together. Isaac was richer and mightier than the whole nation. One man. One man. I decree the rise of financial giants in this church. The rise of financial giants in this church. The rise of financial giants in this church. And you are one of them in the name of Jesus. I said you are one of them in the name of Jesus. I said you are one of them in the name of Jesus. Please, you believe that? Can I hear loud a shout of amen? Yeah. You may be seated. You may be seated. You need to understand that financial dominion is not just a product of principles. It is a grace. That is why we are talking about working in the grace of financial dominion. Because by the grace of God, I am what I am. Yes, I labored much more than they, but not because of myself, but the grace that was with me. 1 Corinthians 15, 10. Beyond principles, we need to understand that financial dominion is a grace. It's a grace, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Yes, let us celebrate principles. Labor there means principles. Something man must do in order for certain things to be achieved. But I'm saying beyond effort, there is what? Grace. Never take out grace. Never take out grace. Because even your effort must be marinated by the grace of God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse number 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse number 8. And God is able yes, to make all grace abound toward you. And when this grace is released in your direction, what is going to happen? It says... You are always going to have all sufficiency in all things. And you shall abound unto every good work. It says you shall have abundance. So there is grace for what? For abundance. Grace for what? Abundance. Somebody shout grace for abundance. Say louder. Grace for what? Abundance. I decree this hour. May this abundance that comes by grace rest upon you in the name of Jesus may you receive the grace for abundance upon all your sources of income grace for abundance upon your financial life grace for abundance in the mighty name of Jesus because of what we must do for God we cannot afford to see you continuing being financially struggling. We cannot afford. Hmm? Okay, let's contribute towards construction works. You contribute 20,000. But your face looks like you, have, you can manage 1 million. But the reality is that you can only manage 25. Sir, we cannot afford to leave you at that level. We cannot afford to leave you at that level. Hmm? <laughs> Is it making sense? Can you imagine if I said, okay, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, let's go to build towards construction works. I don't know how many we are. We are quite a number. Huh? And then chances are that if all of us as we are now if we said everyone contribute something whatever you have in checks in money transfer mobile banking transfer just do it quickly 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 in the next 10 minutes 
if we put all that our money together chances are that it won't even reach two million it's true if it goes beyond two million it will be a miracle now that is a mirror of how financially small people are an amount that should be contributed by one person is contributed by 200 people it shows that people are financially dwarfs financial what now from today you are graduating from being a financial dwarf to being a financial giant in the mighty name of Jesus I said in the name of Jesus I said in the name of Jesus people can I hear loud a shout of amen here so this subject this month is aimed at graduating him from financial smallness to financial what? greatness from financial dwarfness to becoming a financial giant yeah <laughs> hallelujah because your, your dressing does not match your contribution there's something wrong sir it's either you are stingy or you don't have anything I think the second one is correct because most of you are generous I can see generous faces the problem is a pocket hmm? so don't just have a generous heart you need to have a big pocket what kind of pocket big one big big pocket Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It's my responsibility to help you graduate from financial dwarfness to becoming a financial giant for the kingdom of God. For the kingdom of God. You are much mightier than we move out of our country. Verse number 16 of Genesis 26. That is the king, the head of state, telling a private citizen, a foreigner in that country, move out of this country. You are persona non grata. What is my offense? You have become richer than all of us. <laughs> in your family, you shall be the richest in the name of Jesus. Number three. Scriptural examples of people who operated in financial dominion. Number three, Jacob. Jacob. Genesis chapter 30, verse 43. Jacob. The Bible says concerning him that he became exceedingly prosperous. He became exceedingly prosperous and had large flocks. My God. Female and male servants and camels and donkeys rich man number four quickly job you remember the man job in job chapter one verse number three the bible says that his possessions were seven thousand sheep three thousand camels five hundred yoke of oxen five hundred female donkeys and a very large household which means a large workforce so that this man was the greatest of all the people of the east I'm praying for somebody listening to me that in the realm of money you shall be said to be the greatest in the name of Jesus I said the greatest in the name of Jesus I said the greatest in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number five, Solomon. 1 Kings chapter 10, verse 23. The Bible says, so King Solomon, hear this, surpassed all the kings of the earth in riches and wisdom. In riches and he surpassed everyone, sir somebody listening to me may the Lord God of heaven give you 
record breaking financial turnaround record breaking financial turnaround record breaking financial turnaround in the mighty name of Jesus remember Hosea chapter 12 and verse number 13 my God the Bible says by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt so a prophetic ministration was needed for the people's turnaround and you know that their emancipation from the land of Egypt hear this involved a financial turnaround do you know that that apart from the fact that they left the place of bondage one of the things that happened to them is that they secured massive riches massive riches Psalm 105 verse 37 Psalm 105 and verse number 37 how did they come out of the land of Egypt he brought them out with what sir silver and gold he brought them out with silver and gold. That is how they came out of that land. Look at Exodus chapter 12, verse number 36. Exodus chapter 12 and verse number 36. The Bible says, And the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they granted them what they requested. Can we have verse number 35 or 34 for a start? Mm. So the people took their dough before it was leaving, having their kneading bounds, yes, bound up in their clothes on their shoulders, verse 35. Now, the children of Israel had done according to the word of Moses, and they had asked from the Egyptians, what? Articles of silver, articles of gold and clothing. Now look at 36. It says, and the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. This is what we call a supernatural wealth transfer. The wealth of Egypt was transferred to the children of Israel. The Bible says to the extent that the children of Israel plundered the Egyptians, the Egyptians' coffers were left empty. I decree that the coming massive wealth transfer shall be your portion in the name of Jesus. We are transferring worth into your hands right now. We are transferring real money into your hands right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. So these things have a prophetic dimension. They have a what? Financial turnarounds, financial dominion has a prophetic dimension. The Bible says the people did as Moses, the man of God, the prophet of God had asked them to do. And the result was massive financial turnaround. He brought them out with what? Silver and gold. Silver and gold. That is why in the wilderness, when God sanctioned the construction of the tent of meeting, the tabernacle, and its attendant accessories, people gave more than was required. Until Moses said, no, you're not going, anybody who is going to give anymore will be disciplined. But today, sir, churches have to coerce people, introduce giving competitions and trophies just to motivate people. You say, you are backsliding. If you wait for the pastor to trick you into giving, you are a backslider, sir. You're a backslider. And I will never play those games. If you want to stay with your money, stay with it. Huh? We introduce giving competition. <laughs> and then we announce names. The highest giver is Pastor Lawrence. Ten million. Come and get your trophy. Huh? When Jesus said your left hand should not know what your right hand is what? Is doing. And people will be angry if their name is not announced. I gave 12 million and they are not announcing. I leave this church. Are you giving for show? As for me, I cannot announce your name. Why? Did you give it to me? Was the check in my name? Uh -huh. If the check was in the name of PICC, am I PICC? No, I'm not. 
I know some of you say that I go to Pastor Esau Banda's church. Let me correct you. Pastor Esau Banda does not have a church. The church belongs to Jesus. <laughs> you may be seated. Glory be to God. What is the necessity of financial dominion? What is the necessity of financial dominion? Friends, I'll give you two reasons why financial dominion is necessary. Number one, for the promotion of kingdom assignments. For the promotion or call it sponsorship of kingdom assignments. Every child of God must want to have money for the sake of supporting the work of God. For the sake of supporting the work of God. It is clear in the Bible that it is through prosperity that the church will spread. Through what? Prosperity that the church will spread. Zechariah chapter 1 and verse number 17. Zechariah chapter 1. It is through prosperity that the cities of God shall spread abroad. It says, my cities shall again spread out through what? Prosperity. That is why the devil is fighting against the prosperity of the saints. Because if you prosper financially, you are going to give more to the work of God. And it means the work of God will have more resources to be able to carry out his mission. I decree this hour that every siege of the devil on your sources of income is destroyed in the name of Jesus. I lose your sources of income. I release your sources of income. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. You may be seated. You may be seated. God's kingdom cannot spread without resources. And I want us to know that if the work of God is to be done properly, it is very costly. It is very expensive, very costly to do the work of God the way it is supposed to be done. That's the truth. That's the truth. If you don't have, for example, your own place of worship, you have to rent a place of worship. I'm telling you, a proper place of worship is very expensive. That is why there are so many churches that can only afford a primary school classroom that is heavily dilapidated. It's all about money. It's not a choice. No one who choose to be in a primary school classroom for church knows her, except that there are no resources. No one can just say that I like it here. No, sir. People are forced into those kind of situations. There's no problem worshiping God under a tree like our ancestors used to do. But that's not, that's not the ideal. Am I, am I right here? That's not the ideal, sir. You can only do that because there are no resources. As they say in our language, I have nowhere to touch. I have nowhere to touch. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. What are some of the specific kingdom assignments that require our sponsorship? Number one, the preaching of the gospel through crusades, media, and publishing. The preaching of the gospel through crusades, media, and publishing. If you want to have a proper crusade, it can't cost you one million. 
That one is a home cell outreach. But if you are talking of proper crusades, then you should be talking about 25, 30, 40, 50 million coach. Proper crusade. Because it takes weeks and months and in some cases, years of preparation. Just one crusade. People have to go talk to the churches in the targeted location. That now for them to go to those places, that's money, sir. They have to be properly accommodated. Properly accommodated. They have to feed. They have to drive around. They have to distribute materials, hold seminars, pre-crusade seminars. So you wonder, say, hey, why are they talking about money in the church? Let's talk about holiness. Uh, With that, your financial struggle, even hol will holiness be possible? You have no money. You have to lie to get it. People have come to me to lie, sir. I am new in the long way. I came. Uh, so where do you come from? You know, I come from Osanche. You know, there was an auntie, uh, but I don't know where she is. You know, I'm stranded. The reason why he's mentioning Osanche because he knows that. The moment you ask him about how much will it cost you in terms of transport, the amount will be at least exceedingly abundant. <laughs> so when you give him the 15,000 he's looking for to take him to Nsanche, he knows that he has paid the rent there because his rentals in some other place in the long way is 7,500. And he has at least some change to keep him going for the month. Two weeks later, you meet him. He said, ah, ah, are you back from Monsanje? He said, you even forget that he lied to you. He said, Monsanje? No. Yes, people have said, no, pastor, it's not me. Maybe we just look, look, look alike. So, ah, but it's you. No, 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 pastor, you know, you, you meet many people. It's, it's not me. <laughs> Poverty. And such a fellow comes to church he hears a message on money. He says, no, 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 no. I need a message on holiness. So, holiness is difficult with poverty. That's the truth. You may not agree with it, but I have said it. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are talking about, number one, the preaching of the gospel. Number two, infrastructural development the building of churches and other church amenities is capital intensive and the saints must want to have financial dominion so they can contribute towards such causes yes infrastructural development in the church the construction of auditoriums like this it's capital intensive. But when people have money, the work becomes easy. Look at Luke chapter 7, verses 1 to 5. Luke chapter 7, verses 1 to 5. Possible for you to have real money to construct churches single-handedly. Or three, four, five people can team up to say, we are constructing this church. But you cannot do that uh, if you are struggling for what to eat. You are struggling for what to eat. What am I going to eat? Eating has become an intercessory matter. In the name of Jesus, we are eating today. We are eating today in the name of Jesus. Can you build the church of God? Where will you get the money from? So you better listen to all the teachings of this month. Because faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. 
and hearing by the word of God and I will be teaching you the word of God on financial dominion. Financial dominion. Sir. Because it is possible for you to be financially dominant. Where matters of money, finance and provision no longer will be part of your prayer petitions. Because some of you, if I said right now, write seven things you want God to do for you. Chances are that all the seven will be related to money. Number one, scholarship. What is that? Money. You can only need scholarship because you don't have money to finance yourself. That's where scholarship comes in now. Am I right here? You know, <laughs> one young man studying in the university called his father. He said, Daddy, I'm so excited. They have given me a scholarship. The father said, you are not taking that scholarship. Yes. You are not taking that scholarship. Why, Daddy? You are not a son of a poor man. Give a chance to strugglers to get that scholarship. E. It's, it's, you know, his response was like some, some form of arrogance. You are not a son of a poor man. Sir, you can only say that if you are a rich father. If you are not, you will be saying together with the son, praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> And I will be praying for scholarships because I know your size. I will be praying for your what? Scholarships because I know your size. You need it. Ask anybody, don't you need sponsorship? Don't you need it? <laughs> somebody shout hallelujah. I said somebody shout hallelujah. Let us look at Isaiah 45 here. Verses 1 to 3. God is speaking to this man Cyrus. He says, Whose right hand I have held to subdue nations before him and loose the armor of kings to open before him the double doors so that the gates will not be shut. He says to him, Cyrus, I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. Now, and then he says, I'll give you treasures. Have you seen it? I'll give you what? Treasures. I'll give you riches. Treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. God, why are you doing this? Number one, that you may know that I know you by your name. That's one of the reasons God did this. But the other reason is found in verse number 13. Why am I giving Cyrus money? Verse number 13, please. It says, I have raised you up in righteousness. Now hear this. And I will direct all his ways. It says, you shall build my city. Have you seen it? Cyrus, you are going to build my city. That is why I have given you treasures of darkness. I have given you hidden riches of secret places. I have put resources in your hand because among other things, I want you to build my city. And you know what city is talking about? It's talking about the temple that he was to build in Jerusalem. Because God had appeared to him. He said, boy, you are going to build me a temple that your predecessors dismantled and pulled down. You're going to build it. And for you to build it, you need what? Treasures. No church can go far without treasures. And the treasures of a church must come from the people that are in the church. So you must have treasures. You. Because for your being part of this church means that, hear this, your being part of this church means that you believe in the mission 
and the mandate of this church. And it's the people who believe in a mandate who generously support that mandate. But you can't support it if you have nothing to show. You can't support the work of God if you have nothing in your hand. And so you must be angry with the devil and angry with yourself for being a financial struggler. Be angry, especially with yourself. Why? Because there are principles you can follow to get out of your financial littleness. Your challenges you don't want to follow. You have an attitude of handouts. That's a general Malawian attitude of handouts. Surviving on handouts. Government must give me. Member of parliament must give me. If not within the family circle, your big auntie, your big uncle must give you. And when your uncle does not give you, you get angry. You get angry, you hate his wife. As if it is your uncle who gave birth to you. You know, in this country, sir, people who give birth to children for somebody to, to support them. Uncle wanted to let you know that the baby is born. So we need your support. Ah! Is it me who impregnated your wife? We need your support. And if you don't give the support, my God, they will be up in arms. You see his wife. People pro produce children on other people's budget. And if you tell them, please, this is enough. You now have four children. Please stop. They call you a satanist. Now, God said we should be fruitful and multiply. The same God said you should provide for your own household. You want to be producing, multiplying, but you don't want to support. You want somebody else to support your children. It's wrong. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now hear me. The second reason why we must want financial dominion. Number one is for the promotion of God's kingdom, isn't it? Number two, financial dominion is necessary. Hear this. For the dignity of God's children. For the dignity of God's children. For the dignity of God's children. Because we see scripturally that when man fell in the garden of Eden, one of the first things, hear this, that occurred that time was what? Nakedness. Man became naked. And nakedness signifies what? Shame and poverty. Shame and poverty. Shame and poverty. When man fell in the garden, one of the first things that happened to him was that he became naked. And nakedness brings shame and humiliation. Shame and humiliation. And I must say that there is no dignity in poverty. Poverty must be hated. Financial hardship must be fought against in our lives, in our families, because there is no dignity in it. How many people have lost their property, cars, TVs, sofa sets, houses, because they couldn't service debts. They couldn't pay back those they borrowed from and they lost everything. So it's a shame. Sometimes when you see people coming to you under pressure, I need help. I need a bailout. Sometimes a huge sums of money. Poverty and financial hardship and lack of any kind must be fought against. 
in our lives. When there is no money, you can't send your children to proper schools. Because there are schools and then there are proper schools. When there is no money, you can't eat well. So there are so many people that carry bodies that are not their own. For lack of what to eat. I don't know whether you got what I said. I said there are many people that carry bodies that they are not, bodies that are not their own. Bodies that are not their own for lack of proper eating. Most Malawians that are small bodied, if they had eaten well, you would have seen their real bodies. That's the truth, sir. So it may not be correct to generalize and say that Malawians are small bodied people. Mm -mm. Give them proper meal, nice English breakfast, good lunch, good supper. Huh? And do that every day and give them six months. You will be shocked with the body sizes of Malawians. Are they Americans? No, they are Malawians. What has changed? Diet. <laughs> Diet has changed. For example, they say that in Malawi, we don't drink enough milk. And we don't eat enough fish. But for you to get the fish, they don't distribute it on the market, sir. You have to buy and fish is among the most expensive food items in this land. Those of you that afford chambo, you will agree with me. I don't know how many of us afford chambo, but those of us that afford chambo, we can agree that it costs you something. <laughs> because some of you, you, you have even forgotten how chambo looks like. Because it, it, it has never visited your house. It's too expensive. So we need financial dominion for our dignity. Because if you don't have resources, you end up a beggar. You end up a beggar. And there's no dignity in begging. The Bible says, I wish I had all the time. In Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verses 15 to 16. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Now, there was found in it, can we start from verse number 14, please? There was a little city with few men in it, and a great king came against it, besieged it, and built great snares around it. Now, there was found in it a poor wise man and he by his wisdom delivered the city. Yet, no one remembered that same poor man. When you are poor, no one remembers you. Not even for family meetings. They only remember you after they have concluded the meeting. Say, ha! Ah, you forgot that guy. Because they know that whether you attend or not, it doesn't make any difference. Yes. Let me tell you a true story. Some parent died somewhere. And all the children gathered. Conducted the funeral and the burial. And they forgot one of their own. Yes, they only remembered after burial that, ah, we forgot to let him know. Why? He's a fellow who has nothing. So whether he comes or not, he will actually, actually he will be telling us to give him transport. So we'll just pass on the message. We'll just, uh, so it's in the Bible, it says a poor man, no matter how wise, 
he must not be remembered. Sir. That's why our politicians, when we put them in power, they don't remember us anymore. They don't remember a poor man. A poor man is only remembered once when it is election time. That's why now, when the seat has to be delivered, that's when they look for a poor wise man. Once the seat is delivered, they forget about him. You may not like what I'm saying, but it's, it is true. Proverbs 10, 15. Proverbs 10, verse 15. Now hear this. The rich man's worth is his strong city. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. It says poverty is a destroyer, sir. Poverty is a destroyer. It destroys your health. You see, when you are poor, chances of you living long are very slim. Because diseases that kill you are curable diseases. But because you can't afford hospitals that have medicine. Because today there are health centers that have nothing, sir. It doesn't matter what sickness you are suffering from. The medication is the same. Panadol. Or Panadol. Stomachache. Panadol. Headache. Panadol. Toothache. Panadol. Legache. Panadol. Backache. Panadol. Mm? Flu. Panadol. Coughing, Panadol. Mm? Mm. Eyesight problems, Panadol. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. It's a serious matter, sir. Proverbs 19, 7. Proverbs 19, verse number 7. Please, if you can read from the screen, let us read together. One, two, go. All the brothers of the poor hate him. Full stop. That's not a promise. He is telling us the reality on the ground. That if you are poor, all your brothers will what? Hate you. There is no poor man that people will call uncle or auntie. But sir, when you have money, Ay, 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 ay. Even people that are not related to you, they call you uncle. It's a good feeling. Your uncle, uncle. uncle. Say, ah, you. No, we come from the same village, only that I am on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> uncle. But sir, if you are poor, all your brothers will hate you. It's in the Bible. How much more do his friends? If your own brothers are hating you, he says, how much more your friends? He says, they will go far. He may pursue them with words. He says, hey, come, friends, let me greet you. He says, they will abandon him. So people come to me to say, Pastor, <laughs> you know when I had money, oh, I had many friends. But the moment things turned upside down, everyone ran away from me. Sir, it is here. The scripture has already prophesied. There's nothing new about it. You are poor, they run away from you. And our politicians are good at using this verse. Once we vote them into power, they run away from us. So that our cars should be struggling with potholes of Area 49. Sorry. <laughs> Says he may pursue them with words, but they abandon him. Rise on your feet. Let's appreciate God for awakening our conscience to this fact. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Appreciate him. Appreciate him. Appreciate him. 
appreciate him. Let's celebrate him. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Father, we honor you. Father, we exalt you. Father, we glorify you. Father, we uplift you. Thank you, Lord, for this agenda of financial dominion. Begin to prophesy. Grace for financial dominion is resting upon my life. Come on, lift your voice. Grace for financial dominion is resting upon my life. I am working in that grace. I am working in that grace. The grace of financial dominion. The grace of financial dominion. The grace of financial dominion. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. I'm operating in the grace of financial dominion. 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 Yes. Financial dominion. Financial dominion. I'm operating in that grace right now. I'm operating in that grace. Yes, I'm flowing in that grace. The grace of financial dominion. The grace of financial dominion. In the name of Jesus. Begin to prophesy financial turnarounds upon your life. Begin to prophesy financial turnarounds. Financial turnarounds. Financial turnarounds. Yes, financial favor. Financial connections. Yes, financial connections. In the name of Jesus. Makatalabasa, I am connected to my financial helpers, my financial partners. Yes, in the name of Jesus. I am operating in the grace of financial overflow, financial abundance, financial prosperity, financial prosperity. In the mighty name of Jesus. Shakata Ragada. Oh, my sources of income are blessed. I blessed, I blessed grace, grace abundantly exceeding grace is resting upon all my sources of income. All my sources of income, lift your voice, prophesy, prophesy abundantly exceeding grace is resting, is resting, is resting upon all my sources of income in the name of Jesus. I receive right now winning ideas of financial overflow. Winning ideas of financial generation. Financial generation. In the name of Jesus. Shakata Ragadanda. Masata Rigagata. Mashakata. Yakata Ragada. We dismantle the yoke of poverty and financial hardship. All financial attacks from the peace of hell. We tear them down in the name of Jesus. We tear them down in the name of Jesus. We tear them down in the name of Jesus. Shakata la babasa. Everyone lift your two hands. Lift your two hands right now. Shakata rikata la babosa. Likata ragadala mamosa. Right now I rise against all financial attacks. Financial attacks against you. In the name of Jesus. All yokes and forms of financial hardship. Financial humiliation. Financial stagnation in your life. I declare them destroyed in the name of Jesus. I'll pull down all financial obstacles, financial barriers in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Financial doors are open. Financial doors are open. In the mighty name of Jesus, I release upon you financial abundance, financial prosperity. Financial connections, financial favor, financial dominion. Receive it in the name of Jesus. You are walking in the grace of financial dominion. You are walking in the grace of financial dominion. I declare debt cancellation, supernatural debt repayment. In the mighty name of Jesus, let there be financial supply. Supernatural financial supply, supernatural financial provisions, financial abundance, financial success, financial connections, financial assistance, financial prosperity in the mighty name of Jesus. 
good people. Can I hear a louder shout of amen? amen? Stretch forth your hands as if you are receiving something. I decree this hour that those hands are delivered from financial lack in the name of Jesus. They are delivered from financial hardship in the name of Jesus. And right now, I anoint your hands for financial abundance in the name of Jesus. You will handle the kind of money you have never handled before. Money is coming into your hands. Money is coming into your hands. Money, more than enough money is coming into your hands. Money is coming into your hands. Money is coming into your hands. Somebody shout, I receive it. Say it again, I receive it. Say it better, I receive money, more than enough money. I receive more than enough money from my businesses, from my consultancies, from my income generating activities. I receive it from the east. I receive it from the west. I receive it from the north. I receive it from the south. I'm receiving money from my helpers and destiny partners. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. I receive it in abundance. Prophesy. I receive it in abundance. No more financial hardship. No more financial shame. No more financial embarrassment. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. You believe that clap your hands for the king of kings. If you know and believe that your hands are handling the kind of money that you have never handled before, clap them louder to Jesus. Clap those hands louder to the king of kings. Clap them. And as you are clapping, poverty is crushed. Poverty is crushed. As you are clapping, financial hardship is terminated. Financial hardship is dismantled. No more lack in your life. No more stagnation financially in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Financial dignity is landing on you. Financial dominion is what you are getting. Financial success. Financial prosperity. Financial increase. Financial promotion. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, clap louder for the king of kings. Glory be to God. Your body, you locate the word of God concerning your healing. The possessing of your possessions is at the mercy of your confession. I declare this hour that all is well with your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lift your voice, everyone. Father, we give you thanks. We celebrate, honor, and exalt your holy name. You are such an amazing God. You are such a glorious king. You are worthy of all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name. May we lift our hands. Now may the Lord bless you. May he give you peace, success, and prosperity. In the mighty name of Jesus. Throughout this week, may you enjoy the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. May you receive financial testimonies. Amen. Financial turnarounds. Amen. Financial breakthroughs. Amen. Financial connections. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And as you are receiving these financial turnarounds, may the Lord watch over you. Therefore, no evil shall befall you. Amen. No plague shall come near your dwelling. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Every agenda of the wicked against you is cancelled. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You believe that shout a better amen. amen. Psalm 23 and verse number 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Or the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. God bless you.